Good morning. We should have a similar squad to last week. No, uh, I don't think uh, we're still 48 hours to go in two training sessions. So we're a bit careful, but overall, approximately the same team, same squad. Looks like being a pivotal match on Sunday. Leicester like to counter attack with pace, as do Arsenal. So all the ingredients, isn't it, to be very interesting? Well, uh, the first game we played against them at Leicester, well, it was a very open game. It's true that their strength is to go very quick in transition from defence to offence and that we have to nullify their, their pace and uh, their counter-attacking uh, potential. And on our side, uh, we want, of course, to dominate the game and have the ball and uh, be dangerous. How do you think Leicester have changed from that game back at King Power Stadium? They are certainly uh, more convinced of their quality their strengths and their belief that when you played against them, they were top of the table already. So that has not changed, but uh, certainly uh, their belief uh, has been strengthened. Austin, hello. Um, when you played Leicester here at the Emirates a year ago, it was exactly a year ago mm -hmm. in terms of it was the 26th game of the season, they were bottom. Mm -hmm. Do you have to sometimes pinch yourself and think, my goodness, what a journey they've taken. And, and I mean, how do you analyse how well they've done? Well, uh, but I, I remember as well the conversation I had with our manager after the game. Uh, I told him, you cannot go down with the quality you have, you know. And uh, uh, they finished the season very strong. I had never had the feeling during that game that uh, it was the bottom of a league team. And uh, they had already the strengths. And uh, that came out this season because I think they added two or three players who have uh, given them uh, certainly uh, more quality. And they started well, so their confidence level was much higher than last season. Talking of confidence levels, is your team now back to, to the level you'd hope it would be after that win against Bournemouth? Has that got everybody going again? Yeah, we didn't win for a while, so of course it was a bit of uh, belief. Uh, the pressure on the team is a bit stronger and it was very important for us to win on Sunday at Bournemouth what uh, we did and I think we are back to normal level. How pivotal is this game and how pivotal is this weekend in terms of the title race? How much I don't know, but uh, you don't need to be a super mathematician to analyse that uh, it is a very uh, important game, maybe not a decisive one for the for the Premiership, but uh, uh, it's not far away from that. If you don't win it, do you think Leicester will? Uh, it's not sure, you know. Uh, I believe that there's uh, still a long way to go. It's, it's a bit too early, but uh, Leicester is today in a very strong position. And uh, they have uh, uh, certainly silenced all the doubters uh, since the start of the season. Everybody thought that Christmas will not be there anymore. We are now <laughs> nearly Easter and we are still there. So you have, uh, in the last week, I think in the last week, they have uh, become a uh, solid pot uh, potential uh, win of the Premier League. And uh, with two positive results against Liverpool and against Man City away. And so everybody now uh, think they are on same level than anybody else to win it and with one mathematical advantage of five points. Are you pleased to see Claudio Ranieri doing well? You've had a, a friendly rivalry with him over the years, haven't you? Yes, I'm uh, pleased that he, uh, that he is doing well. He has done well in England, you know, before. And he has done well everywhere he worked. He's never beaten you in the Premier League, though, in eight attempts. I hope it will continue. <laughs> um, you talked about the, um, the team news in terms of the fitness, but the, the, the players that are getting closer, <coughs> how excited are you starting to become at the prospect that you've nearly got Danny Welbeck back and Jack Wilsh is not far away, nor Santi Cazorla? What, what sort of effect can you notice that ha having on the rest of the squad? It has a positive impact uh, because the be belief is there that uh, with everybody back we have a bigger chance. We play many games, we are in the FA Cup, we are in the, ch in the Premiership, we are have uh, two massive games against Barcelona as well, so to have everybody available uh, would be great. I think uh, Cazorla and Wiltshire 
Uh, I don't count on them in the next three or four weeks, but uh, everybody else is. And Danny Welbeck, this talk of an under-21 game, is that right? I, uh, he's done quite well, yes. Uh, he is, uh, I think he's very close. Phys Fitness-wise, he's there. It's just competition that he misses. So if we don't see him in the squad this weekend, next weekend's a possibility? Yes. Um, one of the big issues this week, Arsenal, has been their tickets and uh, the, the price of them. A lot of managers have had their say uh, about the pros and cons of, of how, how uh, expensive or not tickets should be and, and how much a way fan should be charged. What are your views on, on, on these subjects? It's a very complicated subject because uh, uh, how do you decide uh, what is the right level of the ticket prices? First of all, it's by your attendance. And uh, then we have been compared many times to uh, uh, foreign clubs, you know. But uh, I don't think we are on the same uh, level ground uh, than the foreign clubs. For example, Bayern Munich paid one euro for their ground. We paid 128 million pounds for our ground. So uh, in France, for they pay nothing at all for their stadium. Uh, they pay nothing for the maintenance. Uh, we pay absolutely every single uh, thing uh, ourselves, so we have to generate as well more revenues. It's true that we get uh, maybe more television income, uh, but uh, that's down to the audience, to the success. And you know as well that the pressure on the market will be to pay the players at a higher price and that our expenses will come up straight away to increase the, the wages. After that, uh, you want to, the ticket prices to be as comfortable as possible for our fans, raise the right level. I'm not, uh, I looked a little bit at the comparisons. Our cheapest price is uh, uh, cheaper than anywhere else in London. Our ex most expensive price is a fraction higher uh, than the other clubs in London, but our most common a price, ticket price is lower than in many places in England, so I don't think uh, that uh, we have a massive problem on that front. Is there a compelling case though for putting a cap on how much away fans should be charged at, at grounds, given how key they are to maintaining the, the good atmospheres that's such a part of the Premier League? Yes, you have to find a compromise where everybody's happy and where the away fans need to be there, you know, and uh, uh, we do our, our absolutely our maximum to, to help away fans to do that. We'll, uh, we look at it at the moment, we have a specialised people who look at it and uh, we want our, the away fans to attend our games, of course. Arsene, uh, momentum at this stage of the season is so important. Clearly a, a win for you on Sunday would be great, but how important would it be to deflate them a little bit? We have more to look at ourselves, you know, what is important for us is, uh, as you said, to find the momentum back and uh, that means uh, that we win, you win a few games and uh, after, let's, let's not count too much on the weakness of Leicester because they have not shown too many and uh, we have beaten them 5-2 at Leicester but the week after we went away from home and won the game so let's not uh, speculate on any weakness of Leicester. We, we want to find a consistency in our results until the end of the season because we have a big game after big game now. A lot of people have been saying they have only 13 games left in their season mm -hmm. there out of all the other competitions uh, and that that's going to be a big advantage but could it be a disadvantage if one or two things don't go quite right in the next couple of weeks, they've got more time to think in between games. Yes, uh, time to think can be a disadvantage if you don't uh, use your thinking in a positive way and uh, the pressure is on and it's true that uh, sometimes the less time you have to wait for the next game, the better it is. Who poses the bigger threat, Vardy or Mahrez? Uh, I would say goal scoring Vardy providing uh, Mares because Mares uh, can create chances from in very tight areas and uh, so I would say uh, that that's why quite they work well together. What is uh, amazing for Mares is he's not only a provider, is the number of goals he scored uh, this season. And in terms of 
the country as a whole who may not be Ars all Arsenal fans, <laughs> are you aware that there's a, a, that general, <laughs> a, a general feeling of the Leicester fairy tale? It's very romantic. That of course it is very romantic and I understand the whole country. Uh, I said that last week in a press conference, uh, that's uh, human and uh, I think it's as well good for football to show that uh, and it goes uh, against as well a little bit the demand of uh, of uh, usual practice in our game, it's spent uh, by big stars and uh, it's important as well to know that with quality work and uh, quality scouting and quality uh, management uh, you can have great results. Absolutely, the first time that Leicester walk out in a Premier League game as, the, as perceived by the world it appears as favourites, is that an opportunity to unnerve them early? I don't know, I believe still uh, they are in a position where they think uh, what they have, where they are, they have nothing to lose. But uh, once you're top of the league, you can have as well think now uh, you can lose w what you have. And uh, that's where the nerves come in a little bit. It's possible, I don't know how they will respond to that. It's early kick-off as well. It's quite hard for these games to get going sometimes. Shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. That's a bit of the uncertainty of... Uh, it's not uh, an early kickoff. It's a very early kickoff, and uh, sometimes it's true that the, these games uh, take a while to start. It's interesting listening to the managers and the players at different clubs say why the pressure is on the opposing <coughs> teams. Is mindset crucial, and how you shape your team's mindset? At the yes, of course, but I don't deny uh, pressure. I think uh, the biggest ga pressure in our in our job is to play games without pressure. And uh, that means there's nothing at stake. And uh, so that's one, the kind of game we want, the guy, kind of game we relish. You can, when you play the Arsenal Football Club, uh, that's what you want. Why is the pressure not on Arsenal? The pressure is on us as well, of course. <laughs> uh, I don't deny that. Uh, but I take that in a very positive way and uh, as an opportunity to show how strong we are. Football fans as consumers, this seems to be the thing that has rallied this now escalating fan protest. What's your view on that? The fans protest? Yes, but the view, the view that fans should be seen as consumers. Look, uh, fans, I, I see fans as supporters and uh, somewhere I think uh, it's like a little bit, uh, they feel like uh, you are at home, you, have, you use electricity and you have no choice, you know. They go to the club, they have no choice. It's a little bit their fate. So they think uh, they, they want uh, uh, a fair price, and I agree completely with you, because uh, football started in the street uh, with people uh, building the club and coming from uh, local places like uh, Islington, you want to, people who live around the stadium be capable to go to the game and, uh, and watch the games. And uh, because they are fans, basically because they were born there. How, how disappointed will you be if fans do walk out in pro or come in five minutes into the game? Or how much? I, uh, I think uh, you want everybody to when the game starts. For me, the game is a joy and uh, everybody has to be part of it. And, uh, you can protest before and after, but during the game you want everybody to be there. Why? Why, why, why is that so important? Why are the fans so important? Because it's a moment of happiness in your life. Life is not every day uh, fantastic. And uh, sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's for many people difficult. And uh, football is a moment of happiness in your life, so don't miss it. Protest, Arsenal. The fact that Liverpool fans did it last weekend, and they were they two 0 up, and they walked out, and then the game finished two two. Have you got any concerns that this thing on Sunday might affect the team at the start of the game? I uh, don't think so. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't like uh, to use that as an excuse. You know. Uh, I think uh, the players, once they're on the pitch, they focus. Uh, on their job and they don't really see. Uh, when you play football sometimes, I didn't even know that it rained or not uh, uh, during the game, you know, you so much in the game uh, that you do not focus too much on what's happening in the stands. Mm. Um, 
obviously been a lot of talk about how well Leicester have done, but you, you know, you, you put five goals past them earlier in the season. Do you think that result has had the respect that it deserves, given how well Leicester has done since? Well, at the time, everybody thought that's normal, uh, with, uh, you know, and uh, today maybe with the distance, you see that it, uh, it was quite a great game from our side. Yeah, you mentioned Riyad Mahrez as well. Was he a player you ever looked at when he was in France? I uh, didn't know him, honestly, he played in the second division in France. So uh, they did extremely well and he has developed very well. And uh, today he's uh, one of the dominant players in the Premier League. And just finally for me, um, Per Mertesack has not played the last couple of games. Mm -hmm. Has that been because you've had concerns about the pace of the opposition attack with the Fodi and Shane Long? And will that be the same on Sunday with Jamie Vardy? Well, it's difficult for me to go into a, any individual assessment. I think he has played many games. I think uh, sometimes uh, I use a different formula. Per Mertesack is a great leader, a very respected one in our dressing room. and. Uh, but I have three centre backs, and uh, I adapt a little bit to their level of form, to the uh, to the number of games they played, as well as you said, to the opponent we play against. What is their strengths, and uh, where can they hurt us? Last one, Bob. Arsene, it's been a month since Olivier Giroud scored. Have you got any concerns about his form? Not so much, uh, because on, for me, uh, on Sunday, he gave the ball to uh, Mesut Ozil on the first uh, goal, you know. Assist or goal, for me, it's exactly the same for a striker.